Thank you. The question is that Amendment 6 be agreed to. Members should cast their votes now. The vote is now closed. Point of order, Ben McPherson. I, I apologise, President Officer. I'm having some difficulties with my connection. I would have voted no. Thank you, Mr McPherson. We'll ensure that's recorded. The result of the vote on amendment number six in the name of Pam Duncan Glancy is yes 24, no 93. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. We now move to group two reviews. I call amendment number one in the name of Jeremy Balfour, grouped with amendments two, four and five. Jeremy Balfour to move amendment one and speak to all amendments in the group. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Um, I, I don't want to take credit uh, for these amendments. In fact, uh, uh, Maggie Chapman um, brought these forward um, at stage two of the committee, and I think uh, very helpfully um, was able to show maybe how we could improve this bill um, slightly better. So I want to uh, uh, thank her for bringing this forward and uh, was disappointed that she didn't move them um, at stage two. And hopefully, um, having debated it this afternoon, the government will take these uh, on board and we can move forward together. At the stage two debate, I was slightly unclear why the Scottish Government wasn't willing uh, to accept uh, these four amendments. I was unclear what the Minister was saying against them. Uh, in one part of the debate, he was saying it will take uh, civil servants away from doing this other jobs to be able to, to do this work. And then later on in his uh, stage two uh, summing up, he said that the work was already being done, it would just take longer to publish it and scrutinise it. So I wonder if the Minister could clarify for me uh, why this amendment uh, cannot be um, accepted. I, I, re I fear the reason is, is that this government simply doesn't want Parliament to be involved in any of the process. Uh, that it is uh, running away again from the scrutiny of this Parliament. They want to keep all the power within government, they want to make all the decisions and just get their back benches to uh, rubber stamp it at the appropriate time. And I think that is disappointing um, in regard to this open, transparent, so-called government, um, as they like to call themselves. Because all we are asking for is the work that has already been done to be simply published so that the Parliament can see that report and then, if appropriate, for the committee of the whole chamber to debate that, to see how we're getting on, to see what progress has been made. And I generally cannot see what the government has to fear in regard to that amendment. The second amendment uh, in regard to uh, carers, 
again, I think Maggie Chapman really helpfully um, has brought forward one of the key issues um, that is happening in our society today. People who care for more than one person um, are penalised on this. Again, we're not asking for any financial money up front now. All we are asking in regard to this amendment is that the Scottish Government carry out a review and report back to Parliament. And then at that point, Parliament can make a decision. So again, perhaps the Minister can tell me, why is he not willing to carry out this review? And why is he not willing for Parliament to be involved in seeing a report and then coming to a review? That is all that, is, that amendment is asking for. And it seems absolutely reasonable to me. So I hope uh, the Chamber will accept these amendments in my name. Thank you, President Officer. Thank you. I call the Minister, Ben McPherson. Thank you, President Officer. Um, as Jeremy Buffer has stated at st uh, stage two, these uh, amendments were withdrawn uh, by Maggie Chapman, who first tabled them, uh, then discussed and rejected by members who chose to, to press them nonetheless. Uh, I have since written to members of the Social Justice and Social Security Committee with further information uh, I wrote on the 6th of October uh, on the ongoing work uh, to review carer benefits, particularly carers allowing supplement and the young carer grant. And in my letter, I set out that a wide range of data and methodologies uh, are used in developing and evaluating our social security policies, including quantitative survey data, uh, benefit statistics, input from users, uh, including through our experience panels, uh, existing research by other organisations and commissioned research. Both uh, carer benefits analysis uh, and the wider research on carers and the caring experience are considered in the evaluation of our carer benefits. And this work, combined with the client insights work of Social Security Scotland, provides a rich stream of evidence to help us build a social security system that works for all of Scotland's communities. The Scottish Government has recently published evaluations of both the Carers Allowance Supplement and the Young Carer Grant that are available for this Parliament to consider. These show that the supplement has gone some way to meeting its overall aims to improve outcomes for carers by providing extra financial support uh, to provide greater recognition of the essential societal contribution that carers make, uh, and that the majority of young carer grant recipients felt it helped to make a difference to their lives, uh, gave them access uh, to more opportunities and improved their mental well-being. We are currently progressing work to deliver Scottish carers assistance, uh, including the additional payment for those with multiple caring roles. Uh, and one of the key issues that we are seeking to address uh, is the very limited data currently available to enable us to identify uh, who would be eligible. And so, as I noted at stage two, I do not believe that the review and reporting obligations proposed by the amendments in this group are required. Further, if they were to be accepted, the amendments were to be accepted, then meeting these reporting requirements would, re would require an a reallocation of resources uh, away from our work developing Scottish carers' assistance. Uh, and so for these reasons, uh, I believe that amendments 1, 2, 4 and 5 are unnecessary uh, and would be unhelpful, and I would uh, therefore urge this Parliament to reject each of the amendments in this group. Thank you. I call Jeremy Balfour. Um, Mr Balfour, may I confirm that you moved amendment number 1? Um, I, I did. Well, if I didn't, I'm happy to move it now. Uh, thank you, General. Uh, again, I, I'm generally I'm confused with the Minister. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he just said this is going to take away resources, but we're opening two or three minutes of his speech was saying, here's all the work that's been done. Yeah. So either the work has been done and can be reported to Parliament, or the work hasn't been done and he doesn't want us to know that. So uh, did, could the Minister like to intervene on me and tell me, yeah. had the work been done, and if so, why can't it be published, or is it taking away resources from being able to do the work? Which is it? I'm happy Minister. to advise Mr Balfour, as I uh, set out in my letter of the 6th of October, of all the work that's already ongoing to evaluate our benefits, and therefore I think his uh, amendments would r create unnecessary uh, work uh, taking away civil service time from the development of Scottish Care's assistance and are therefore superfluous, and I urge Parliament to reject them. Jeremy Balfour. So the work's been done, 
but we don't want you to know about it. It's what the Minister is saying today. And that's the clear attitude of the Scottish Government. It's a secret government that doesn't want any scrutiny at all from the whole of Parliament. And that is what we're hearing today. Absolutely. Thank the member for Miles taking his Briggs. intervention, because ministers say read the letter. It's one paragraph, basically, with an excuse in the middle of it. So when you're saying read the letter, it's not answering the questions which were raised at committee. Um, specifically to quote you, minister, it's saying one of the key issues that uh, we're seeking to address is the limited data available. You've said the data exists and you've done the work. Where is it and why can't Parliament have that? Jeremy Balfour. But I also, can I just uh, thank the member for his intervention and his insightful usual way, I think, has just put that spotlight right on where the Scottish Government do not want it to be. But work's been done, we don't want you to see it. And what is even worse than that is the amendment they are going to also vote against, from what we hear, is looking at reviewing, not financially supporting, reviewing what we can do to help someone who's caring for more than one person in the household a review, and the government is saying no to that. The message today from this chamber is that the SNP Green Coalition will give you warm words, but if you want change, if you want money, if you want to make a difference, don't support us. I move the amendment in my name. Sorry, Mr Balfour, can I ask if you, you wish to press amendment number one to a vote? I do. Thank you. The question is that Amendment 1 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. The Parliament is not agreed. Members should cast their votes now. The vote is now closed. Point of order, Ben McPherson. Apologies, I'm having connection difficulties for the app today. I would have voted no. Thank you, Mr McPherson. We'll ensure that's recorded. Point of order, Craig Hoy. I would have voted yes. Thank you, Mr Hoy. We'll ensure that's recorded. Thank you, Mr Chowdhury. We'll ensure that's recorded. Point of order, Eleanor Whittam. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm having connection problems and I would have voted no. Thank you. Thank you, Ms Whittam. We'll ensure that's recorded. The result of the vote on amendment number one in the name of Jeremy Balfour is yes 50, no 67. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment number two in the name of Jeremy Balfour, already debated with amendment one. Jeremy Balfour to move or not move? Uh, move. The question is that amendment two be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. The Parliament is not agreed. Members should cast their votes now.
The vote is now closed. Point of order, Oliver Mundell. Uh, app to allow me to vote. I would have voted yes. Thank you, Mr. Mundell. We will ensure that is recorded. Point of order, Kenneth Gibson. Thank you, Mr. Gibson. We will ensure that is recorded. The result of the vote on amendment number two. Thank you, colleagues. The result of the vote on amendment number two in the name of Jeremy Balfour is yes, 51, no, 66. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment three in the name of Jeremy Balfour, already debated with amendment six. Jeremy Balfour, to move or not move? Uh, move. The question is that Amendment 3 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. The Parliament is not agreed. Members should cast their votes now. The vote is now closed. The result of the vote on amendment number three in the name of Jeremy Balfour is yes 51, no 66. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment seven in the name of Pam Duncan Glancy, already debated with amendment six. Pam Duncan Glancy, to move or not move? Moved. The question is that amendment seven be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. The Parliament is not agreed. Members should cast their votes now. The vote is now closed. Point of order, Jackie Bailey. I'm afraid I lost my connection, but I would have voted yes. Thank you, Ms Bailey. We'll ensure that's recorded.
The result of the vote on amendment number seven in the name of Pam Duncan Clancy is yes, 51, no, 67. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. I call amendment four in the name of Jeremy Balfour, already debated with amendment one. Jeremy Balfour to move or not move? Uh, not move. Thank you. I call Amendment 5 in the name of Jeremy Balfour, already debated with Amendment 1. Jeremy Balfour to move or not move? Uh, not move. Thank you. That ends consideration of amendments. And at this point in the proceedings, I am required under standing orders to decide whether or not, in my view, any provision of the Bill relates to a protected subject matter. That is, whether it modifies the electoral system and franchise for Scottish parliamentary elections. In the case of this bill, in my view, no provision of the Carers' Allowance Supplement Scotland Bill relates to a project protected subject matter. Therefore, the bill does not require a supermajority to be passed at stage three. There will be a brief suspension before we move to the open debate. Okay, could I ask uh, members who are leaving the chamber to do so um, as quickly and as quietly as possible? And the next item of business is a debate on motion uh, 1554 in the name of Ben McPherson on the Carers Allowance Supplement uh, Scotland Bill. I would invite members who wish to contribute to this debate to press the request to speak buttons uh, now or place an R in the chat function. And I call on the Minister to speak to and move the motion for around seven minutes, Minister. Thank you, President Officer, and I am very pleased to present the Carers Allowance Supplement uh, Scotland Bill to Parliament for this uh, Stage 3 debate. I would also like to begin uh, again, and as we have done through the, the Stage 3 considerations uh, collectively, by recognising and thanking the thousands of unpaid carers across Scotland who make a remarkable contribution to our society. I would also like to uh, place on record my thanks to the Parliament and the Social Justice and Social Security Committee in securing an accelerated timetable for this bill. Uh, this was critical to ensuring that we increase December's Carers Allowance Supplement payment. I would also like to thank uh, the committee members and clerks for their work on the bill uh, and also to thank my bill team uh, and also my private office. This uh, Scottish Government has taken action to address the fact that carers allowance was otherwise the lowest of all working age benefits. Carers allowance supplement, which was the first payment made by Social Security Scotland, increases carers allowance by around 13%. It provides carers with an additional £462.80 a year on top of their carers allowance in recognition of the role they play in our society. Since 2018, we have paid over £149 million to around 120,000 carers through the carers allowance supplement. Carers in Scotland continuously in receipt of carers allowance and carers allowance supplement will have received over £2,270 more than carers in the rest of the UK since it was launched. Moreover, presiding officer, we have also now invested around £1.3 million since October 2019 through our Young Carer Grant, uh, the first support of its kind in the UK. And we have heard from young carers how this has helped, uh, helped them to, to make a difference in the, and, and made a difference in their lives uh, and helped them to access more opportunities. And overall, presiding officer, through our social security powers, we have invested more than £350 million a year in supporting carers through carers' allowance, 
Carers Allowance Supplement and the Young Carer Grant. Indeed, of the 11 benefits we are now delivering, the Carers Allowance Supplement and the Young Carer Grant are two of seven brand new benefits uh, which support people across Scotland by putting money directly into their pockets. This, of course, is in stark contrast to the other news this week uh, of universal credit being cut by £20 a week by the UK Government. Prime Officer, as colleagues know, the provisions in this bill seek to increase the amount of the Cares Allowance Supplement to be paid in December 2021, in just a few months' time, in recognition of the increased pressures carers are facing and have faced uh, as a result of the pandemic. This bill ensures a payment of £462.80 will be made in December to all Carers Allowance uh, Supplement recipients uh, instead of the planned £231.40. This is the second time we have done this, uh, with the first time uh, being through the emergency coronavirus legislation uh, last year and the, the, payment being, uh, the, 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 sup the additional supplement payment being made in, in June last year. Then uh, and now, this is an additional investment by the Scottish Government of around £20 million to assist carers in these challenging times. In total, this means our investment this year uh, and uh, last in Carers Allowance Supplement and our additional payments is therefore around, around £120 million uh, from our own budgets. Um, and uh, we do this, as uh, has been debated through the, the Stage 3 amendment, uh, from a fixed budget, uh, a, a, a largely fixed bu budget in a devolved settlement. Yes, of course. Even North. Thank, thank you to the Minister for giving me. Now that we're in the last phase of this stage of this bill, will, will he address the issue that was raised repeatedly by my colleague Jeremy Balfour? Why exactly, given everything that, that the Minister is saying in his speech, why will, the, why will the government not review and report to Parliament in the way that he's describing the success that he's talking about? Why will you not allow Parliament to review, uh, to see the review and to scrutinise the performance of this benefit? Minister. I, I thank Stephen Kerr for um, his intervention, and I know he does so through a position of advocating the principles of transparency and collective evaluation. And I would point him to my letter of uh, the 6th of October, uh, which is um, several sides, not one side, uh, of, of A4. Uh, and he will get an indication from that piece of correspondence of the evaluation work that has been done and is ongoing to make sure that our benefits are delivering um, as is envisaged by uh, the 2018 Act and uh, through our Charter and through all the other ways in which we measure our performance and set our direction. Brian Officer, um, focusing back on, on, on the, what's before us today, uh, this increased payment, if we pass the bill today, will help mitigate some of the negative impacts uh, of the virus on carers' own finances and well-being, uh, and also help them to continue to provide vital caring roles uh, at a time when uh, health and social care services uh, are, as we know, um, uh, stretched um, more than they would be in normal times. Pres yeah, yeah, sure. Pam Duncan Glancy. Um, thank you, Deputy President Officer, and thank you. I'll, I'll be brief, Minister. Um, will, will the Minister give commitment to, to unpaid carers across Scotland that the certainty that they need and the money that they'll need in their pockets um, will be available again in June? Minister. Um, as uh, we have um, considered through, uh, so uh, th there will be a, a payment in June of the Carers Allowance Supplement, as there has been um, throughout the, the process uh, since the introduction uh, of the Carers Allowance Supplement in 2018. Uh, whether there is an additional additional supplement, as we have debated through the various stages of this bill, will be down to budget considerations that we will undertake collectively as a parliament um, in due course. Um, and, uh, President Officer, we also recognise, um, of course, that the pandemic has identified a need uh, for greater flexibility in how we support carers when society faces significant um, changing circumstances. And that is why the bill includes a power uh, to enable ministers to bring forward regulations which, if approved by the Parliament, could increase the amount of the carers' allowance supplement in future periods, um, as Pam Duncan Glancy um, inquired about then. Um, as I noted in stage one, we are uh, continuing uh, to work with carers and organisations to represent and support them 
to consider options to improve support through the introduction of Scottish Carers Assistance, a replacement for Carers Allowance, ahead of uh, the consultation planned uh, for this winter. And I'll say a bit more about Scottish Carers Assistance in my concluding remarks. But uh, we will create a Scottish Carers Assistance that works better for carers uh, than the current Carers Allowance. Uh, the improvements we make will build on changes we have already made uh, and those already planned to improve support for Scotland's unpaid carers, which has been a priority uh, with our social security powers. Um, to conclude, I urge everyone to support this bill, uh, and I move that the Parliament agrees that the Carers Allowance Supplement Scotland Bill be passed. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Minister. To avoid uh, curtailing the debate, I'm minded to accept a motion without uh, notice to move decision time back to 5.20, and I would invite the Minister for Parliamentary Business to move such a motion. Moved, President Officer. Thank you. And I put the question that the question is that under Rule 11.2.4, decision time is moved to 5.20. Uh, are we all agreed? Thank you very much indeed. Um, I now call on Miles Briggs to speak for around six minutes. Please, thank, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And, uh, like the Minister, can I also start by thanking all those in Parliament and outside of Parliament, especially the organisations which have provided assistance and briefings as, as we have seen the passage of the Carer's Allowance Supplement Bill. Scottish Conservatives accepted the reasons given by Ministers and the Scottish Government for the expedited timetable for consideration of this bill. And we as a party have worked constructively to ensure unpaid carers receive the doubling of this payment ahead of Christmas and in December when it will be made. I would, however, put on record my disappointment that the Bill has not provided the opportunity to take forward at an earlier stage some of the improvements all parties supported at the May election. Indeed, the constructive amendments which we saw in the name of Maggie Chapman and Jeremy Balfour at both Stage 2 and Stage 3 of the Bill. And I am disappointed in the Green Party uh, today. The Green members seem to have lost their voice at stage two of this bill because there are some very positive elements we brought forward which Parliament has now rejected. I think that is disappointed. Because the passage of the bill has indeed presented a number of important areas where I believe there is cross-party support for reform and improvement around the uptake and delivery of support for carers in Scotland. Now, I welcome the letter the Minister sent to the committee yesterday regarding ongoing work and the review around carers' benefits, including work around, specifically around the Young Carers Grant. Unpaid carers are indeed the backbone of our social care system, and they often go unrecognised. And I want to thank Scotland's unpaid carers, especially young carers, for everything that they have done and the work they undertake to provide care and love to people across Scotland. That is why, throughout the passage of the Bill, Scottish Conservatives have tried to progress how we can further support Scotland's carers. The Committee heard many responses outlining concerns with regards to the qualifying rules of carers' allowance, in, including young carers not being able to get the Young Carer Grant if they are in receipt of carers' allowance at the time they are applying for the Young Carers' Grant. Now, the Committee report has raised all these important issues with regards to eligibility criteria, and I hope the Minister and the Cabinet Secretary, who is still in the Chamber as well, as, uh, as in Government, will be able to outline to Parliament at the earliest opportunity their approach to these issues and how and when progress to extend uh, the additional payments to those caring for multiple persons will be able to be delivered by Parliament. There is cross-party support for that, and I hope we will see that brought forward as soon as possible. As I outlined during stage one, uh, the Stage 1 debate, Scottish Conservatives also support early action to extend payments for carers after bereavement and for the new support package for people um, who are often having to give up work uh, to care for a loved one. Uh, this call has been supported by carers' organisations, and we heard that at committee. And although the Minister has not included this specific ask within uh, the letter he wrote to the committee yesterday, I hope the Minister will agree to meet with me and discuss this important reform and how we can progress this, progress this change at the earliest opportunity. I have also written to the Cabinet Secretary for Education to ask about what support and reforms can be taken forward around bereavement, uh, bereaved carers to access training and specifically mental health support. Because we know the number of young carers in Scotland uh, have been impacted and have increased during the pandemic. But we need to now look towards their educational needs and the attainment gap, which has grown wider and wider for them. And it's incredibly important, which I hope, this is an incredibly important issue, which I hope across Parliament uh, we can find uh, cross-party support for improvements and reforms. 
There is also a real need to take a cross-portfolio uh, cross approach uh, to carers' rights and the package of support the country can deliver. And I hope ministers across government will look at how they will individually be able to add value within their respective departments. As has been stated by carers and carers' representatives during the passage of the bill, it is vital we recognise the importance of carers being able to access support, but that goes beyond just financial support. We need to see a system and package of support in place for carers across Scotland that considers each individual need for that carer and a, a carer as a whole. And I hope all sectors and all arms of this government and local authorities as well can look now towards where we can add value to help support Scotland's carers to improve their lives and future opportunities. Uh, to conclude, Deputy President Officer, Scottish Conservatives do welcome the Carers Allowance uh, Supplement Bill. Unpaid carers, as I have said, are the backbone of our social care system. It is only right that they receive this additional payment to mitigate the financial effects of the pandemic. I hope the many reforms and asks of carers which we have heard during the passage of this bill will be heard by ministers today. And we have certainly at committee uh, taken on board many of their views which they have been put to, to us as we have taken evidence. And I certainly hope that ministers and parliament will look towards how we take those forward at the earliest opportunity. Scottish Conservatives will support the bill at decision time. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Mr Briggs. I now call on Pam duncan Glancy for around five minutes, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I am pleased to open this debate for Scottish Labour, and I would like to begin by thanking the committee clerks specifically for their hard work on this bill and for the other colleagues um, on, on the committee. The bill before this chamber today seeks to put more money in the pockets of unpaid carers this December by doubling the winter payment of Carers Alliance Supplement. As someone who relies on care, both paid and unpaid, I cannot stress enough to the chamber again the importance of the care provided by all carers across Scotland. And I would like to say again today thank you to every single one of them, both paid and unpaid, for years of support for me personally and for the millions of people across this country who rely on care. Deputy President Officer, Scottish Labour recognises the importance of unpaid carers and the contribution they make. Carers have gone above and beyond during this pandemic, working more hours, taking on more responsibility, all while the services that should have been there to support them were reduced and in some instances removed altogether. Carers deserve more than just our praise. They need bold and transformative action. One carer described to me that thanks and love does not pay the bills. And so, while we do believe this bill goes, does not go far enough to recognise carers, we appreciate that it does more for them than is the case now, and in that vein we will be supporting this bill today. But the government, there is much to do for the government. There are an, an estimated one million unpaid carers across Scotland. They need us to go even further to tackle the poverty and inequality that they face. I'm disappointed that the amendments put forward in my name and in the name of Jeremy Balfour did not pass. These amendments would have given carers more certainty over the money they will have in their pockets. This uplift to the Carers Allowance Supplement was introduced because the Government recognised the additional pressures facing unpaid carers during the pandemic. It was the right thing to do then, and the pandemic is far from over. Just last week, the Scottish Government rightly condemned the Tory Government for its failure to maintain an uplift to universal credit, an uplift that was also introduced to recognise the unprecedented situation brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic. It was wrong to remove the uplift to universal credit catastrophic in my view. It is also wrong not to give carers the certainty of committing to their uplift too. I have met with many carers, carers organisations and those who require care. The realities they have shared with me have highlighted why now more than ever we need to focus our efforts on the inequality that they face. I have heard how some carers are caring for 24 hours, seven days a week, and 90 per cent have said they have done it without a break. In many places across the country, they are still waiting on the services they relied on pre-pandemic to recommence. And I want to take this opportunity to re reiterate to the government the importance of, of, for carers and of people who use services of getting these back up and running as soon as possible. We are not back to normal, far from it. And while I hope we will strive forward for a better and new, more equal normal, we must recognise that those additional pressures brought about by the pandemic do still exist, especially for unpaid carers in Scotland. But we must also recognise that they were struggling to make ends meet long before COVID. The reason to act is long-standing. Deputy Presiding Officer, the reality is that often carers do not have a choice to care. They take on responsibilities in the absence of a social care system that fully meets the needs of those they care for. They are stepping up and stepping in when there is no one else to do so. 
Some have had to give up work, many of whom are women, and this puts them further into poverty. Indeed, in the Social Security Committee this week, we heard of the need to address this inequality and the importance of lifting women doing unpaid care out of poverty to reaching our child poverty targets. This morning, Engender highlighted this and noted that the, the urgent need to address the chronically low carers' benefits to doing this. Carers' allowance is currently set at the equivalent of 15 hours a week at the living wage. That is below the poverty line. The Scottish Government have held powers to reform this for the past four years, yet it does not expect to be in a position to review Scottish carers' assistance and pay more until 2025. Deputy Presiding Officer, I have already aired my frustration at this and at the constraints that have been placed on us in terms of our freedom to amend this bill and bring long-term transformation. It is a shame that we are not here today debating a bill that would do just that, a policy that could have the potential, if done right, to give financial security and certainty to carers in the long term. This is a missed opportunity. With 90 per cent of Scotland's carers st still unable to claim carers' allowance, we should be using the powers of this Parliament to revise eligibility criteria that currently lets too many slip through the net. Instead, carers are being left at the hands of the DWP until the Scottish Government is ready to pick up their rulebook. Carers simply cannot wait that long. Preside, Deputy Presiding Officer, this legislation will provide a welcome but temporary measure to ease the financial pressure on carers right now, and we will support it, but it by no means addresses the wider inequality they face. We know that the efforts of the pandemic are going to be far felt. The effects of the pandemic will be far felt beyond the payment, and we also know that caring responsibilities will not disappear. Indeed, they will increase. In the weeks and coming months ahead, Scottish Labour will continue to push the government to go faster, do everything in its power to support unpaid carers and reform carers' allowance. But today, we recognise that while it may not be enough, this bill will put money in the pockets of carers, and Scottish Labour will always support doing that. Thank you, Ms Duncan Glancy. I now call on Willie Rennie. Uh, around four minutes, Mr Rennie. If it hadn't before, the value and need for unpaid carers shone bright through this pandemic. This bill is our commitment that recognises their commitment. It does not cover every carer. It is far short of that. But those that it does will receive an essential supplement to their income. It is an essential supplement, but we should never kid ourselves that this will be enough for most. We know the financial struggles that they endure week in, week out, which is why we must return to this when we consider shaping the new benefit, the carer's assistance. I had hoped the government would end the uncertainty for next year, at least by committing to the supplement for next year. Unpaid carers now face the possible prospect of a cut, just like universal credit, next year. This is because the trauma, not just now, the trauma of the pandemic has not ended. In fact, the costs continue to rise for carers just like everyone else. I will take an intervention. Minister. I, I thank uh, Willie Rennie for taking the intervention. I am sure he, he would uh, acknowledge that we have had an additional payment since 2018. So what we have done in June 2020 and intend to do in December this year is pay an additional, additional payment uh, and, uh, to uh, secure the power in order to potentially make such additional, additional payments uh, in the future, if that is the will of Parliament. Mr Rennie. But it is not guaranteed. And it is not guaranteed, which could result, yes, payment going up, but it could equally go back down again. And the sooner we get the commitment, the sooner the unpaid carers of this country will get the certainty that they need through incredibly difficult times. And I'm sure the Minister understands that. I just don't buy the argument from the Minister and from the Government that this is subject to future budget negotiations. It makes multi-year commitments all the time. And for the Government with a multi-billion pound budget, this is insignificant, largely fixed cost was the qualified description of the government's budget when the minister was challenged. Largely fixed cost, not completely fixed cost. He has got the flexibility. He's got a multi-billion pound budget. He could make this commitment to reduce the uncertainty for carers. For the individual carers, this is worth so much more. But for the government, it is not a big deal. Given that we require carers to provide 35 hours of care a week, 
The amount is equivalent to £2 an hour. The increase is not enough to take them out of poverty. We will have to look at the financial commitment that we can make if we are going to address the fundamental problems that carers experience. We need to look at the matter in the long term in the carers assistance process. The underlying entitlement issues need to be addressed too, because at present there is a massive gap between the number of unpaid carers in Scotland and the tiny number who receive the allowance. The current benefit only provides support for one in ten carers. Those who are of pensionable age are denied support, as are many other categories as well. With the carers' assistance, we need to investigate how we can extend the coverage. I want to thank the committee, the clerks, the officials and the minister for their rapid work on this bill. But I want to pay particular credit to Pam Duncan Glancy and Jeremy Balfour for provoking and for challenging the Minister and the Government and the SNP and Green Benches throughout this process. I am in admiration of the work that they have done. <laughs> At stage, work, stage one, I talked about uh, Amy Newton, who has MS, and the experience of her world that she provided for me in just one afternoon. I was exhausted after shopping with clouded goggles, thick gloves and heavy weights. We owe Amy, the hundreds of thousands of people like her and their carers, for a proper level of support. And it must be a job that this Parliament returns to, with a full commitment to doing right by them. We will support the Bill this afternoon. Thank you, Thank you Mr Rennie. And now, uh, we move to the open debate and I now call Neil Gray around four minutes. Mr Gray. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Further to my earlier contributions, I wanted to make a more general speech about the merits of this bill before Stage 3 is completed. Uh, this bill delivers a second double payment of the Scottish Government's carer supplement. It means the eligible carers in Scotland are due to get an additional £462.80 in December on top of their regular carer's allowance. The evidence we heard in committee from carers and representative stakeholders proves why this is necessary, but also goes some way to demonstrate the value this government places on the role being played by unpaid carers. Carers Scotland estimate the economic value that they contribute to be over £10 billion a year to Scotland, but it is far harder to measure the social and well-being impact they make. And there is no doubt that carers and the people they are caring for have had a particularly difficult time over the last 18 months. Many have had to take on additional roles and faced additional costs during the pandemic. We heard about those challenges and evidence to the committee, and it was also rightly raised at stage one, not just financial challenges, but also in terms of respite services. It is right, therefore, that we make sure we keep doing what we can to assist these heroes to keep doing their phenomenal work for the people they care for. By doubling the December payment, carers in Scotland will be £690 better off this year compared to those on carers' allowance elsewhere in the UK. And to go back to an element of the debate in the previous section, a line of argument being pursued by Miles Briggs and Jeremy Balfour and then an intervention by Stephen Kerr, I think it needs correcting by them. At first, the, the, the letter that came from uh, the Minister on the 6th of October, uh, which uh, the, Mr Briggs said was... Uh, just a paragraph, actually extended to three pages, uh, and not just a paragraph. Um, perhaps Mr Briggs needs to uh, check uh, his printer se settings, as perhaps it was only the final page that came off his printer. I give way. Miles Briggs. Thank the member for that uh, intervention, for that point. Um, I was specifically referring to support for carers of multiple persons. And having had a long discussion at committee during the passage of the bill, he will be very aware from this letter that there is literally just a paragraph on that. Neil Gray. The, the, the section about evaluation, which was, I, th I thought, the point that Mr uh, Briggs and Mr Balfour were referring to, is, is certainly longer than that. And also, uh, on evaluation, there is a link there uh, to the published evaluation that the Scottish Government uh, produced uh, at the December last year. So there's no secrecy, there's no conspiracy, as uh, some of the Conservatives uh, would have wanted uh, people to believe. Far from it. And I think the Tories today perhaps need reminding that their party continues to preside over a carers' allowance 
allowance is the most miserly form of social security. This supplement is only available to eligible carers in Scotland. So perhaps if the Tories want this supplement to go further, they could persuade their colleagues at Westminster to pull their weight uh, by expanding payment or eligibility of carers' allowance. If they no will not, the calls we hear today for the Scottish Government to go even further uh, than their colleagues in Westminster lack any credibility whatsoever. And while the Scottish Government is investing in providing additional support to carers, the UK Government is shamefully cutting universal credit by £1,040 per year. And remember, many carers, unpaid carers, will also be receiving this supplement, will also be receiving universal credit. One Government investing in Social Security to support our citizens, our carers, the other driving poverty uh, by cutting Social Security. And I have no doubt we will have further discussions about future supplements via the regulatory power this bill gives to ministers, and I look forward to taking those views on the new Scottish carers' assistance when those proposals are published soon. To conclude, Presiding Officer, I want to put on record again my thanks to carers across Scotland for all they do. I also want to thank those people who submitted their evidence and suggestions to the Committee for our consideration, and I want to thank the team who support the committee, such as our clerks and Spice, for getting our scrutiny done in the truncated timescale. I very much hope this bill passes unanimously tonight and that we can get the crucial support that our carers deserve in their pockets for December. Thank you very much, Mr Gray. I now call on Jeremy Balfour, who will be followed by Marie McNair. Mr Balfour, around four minutes, please. Uh, thank you, Deputy President. Officer. Can I um, welcome this final stage of the bill? And I'm pleased that it will get all party support uh, tonight. Um, I also want to thank the clerks um, and others um, who have got this bill through so quickly and smoothly. Deputy President, Officer, this is a measure that is, this place has power to implement. Unlike many issues that have been brought before this chamber over the last couple of weeks, it is within our remit to enact. It is though disappointing that this bill does not go as far as it could have gone. Uh, we pay other benefits, such as PIP, on a recurring basis. That is fixed within the budget of Scottish Government. And I am still not clear why the Government cannot commit to this. Small sum for them, massive sum for carers, into long-term budgeting process. The carers that give so much unseen work require that longer term stability that they require. And I do hope that we will get an early announcement from either the Cabinet Secretary or from the Minister as soon as the budget, budget is announced or whether this will be happening again uh, next summer and next Christmas. And I hope at least uh, the Minister will commit in his summing up to coming back to Parliament before the end of this year to give us that commitment either one way or another. But I obviously you would notice that I also lodged a, a number of other amendments, some of which were originally lodged by Maggie Chapman at stage two. I did find it curious that both at stage two and today, both the SNP and the Greens voted these amendments down. They were introduced by a member of their coalition there were interesting, helpful amendments, which I think would have given Parliament a greater role in scrutiny, but were quickly dismissed by the Minister. Ms Chapman has evidently learned the harsh lesson that this Government is no way interested in constructive deviations from the rigid and dogmatic agenda. No, I'm afraid I won't. We have seen today, I'm sorry, we have seen today that the party of government talks about reaching out to other parties, working together. But when people come forward with constructive non-financial amendments, they are rejected. Do, do, you, do you want to make an intervention? Cabinet Secretary. I was bringing forward financial amendments that require to be looked at through the budget process and also the point that's been made by a number of members about the reach to carers, the fact that people are saying they want to reach more carers. Surely it's better to look at the round about the need for carers' support going forward rather than trying to amend a very, very clearly tight bill. Jeremy Balfour. Uh, Deputy Minister, the Cabinet Secretary has obviously not read the amendments. 
It, it was reporting, it was to report what this government was doing, I was asking in some of my amendments, but you weren't even willing to support those. And the point that the Minister made in his closing statement um, at, when we were discussing the amendments was that we are starting the consultation period now. Any new benefit is likely to be introduced in 2025. That's four years unpaid carers have to live with this uncertainty because of what this government has decided. To conclude, again I say that our carers are individuals who give an invaluable to our society and it behoves us in this place to offer them not just warm words but actually proper financial support. We will support this bill but it could have been so much better if the government had listened both to mine and to Labour's amendments. Thank you, Deputy President. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr Balfour. I now call Marie McNair, who will be followed by Mark Griffin. Uh, Ms McNair, around four minutes, please. Thank you, President Officer. I welcome the opportunity to speak in this debate and again put on record my support for unpaid carers because I've long recognised what they do. And my support is shaped by my daily contact in my previous job as part of the nursing team at St Margaret of Scotland Hospice in my constituency. I also repeat my praise for the staff and volunteers of Carers of West Dumbartonshire and Carers Link East Dumbartonshire, who provide outstanding support to carers in my constituency. Throughout our communities, the contribution of carers is invaluable and inspiring. And I said at stage one debate that the care they have given during this pandemic has been life-saving. It is often someone looking after a parent, relative or friend, and they see it as an automatic response to help someone they love and care for. But with this support, the person can care for them and be able to live in their, their house and then really be part of the community and participate in the way they want to. This debate gives us the opportunity to put on record our thanks to every single unpaid carer for their dedication, love and compassion. This period has been incredibly difficult for many in society, but many carers will have felt it more than others. So the bill, if passed today, it will, one, recognise the massive contribution that unpaid carers have made during this pandemic by doubling the amount of carers' allowance supplement. Two, get this money into the pockets of carers for Christmas, a time of real financial pressure for families. I welcome that the Chief Executive of the Carers Group, Voco, has said, we believe the carers' allowance supplement is a positive step towards valuing the role of carers as equal partners in care and recognising their crucial contribution to Scotland's economy. We really do value carers. President officer, the Carers Allowance Supplement is part of the wider support to carers that has been clearly set out and carefully budgeted for. I didn't support the amendments from the opposition, and it's disingenuous to suggest we set future amounts of the supplement in this way. Given the scale of what needs done, including the mitigation of a Westminster wrong that put carers on the lowest level of earning replacement benefit, the opposition party should bring forward the budgets for debate and scrutiny at budget time, and to do it any other way will be seen by many carers as a continuation of false promises to them that has never really came to fruition. By doubling the supplement payment for December, over 91,000 carers will receive additional support, which I know will bring some relief. But, however, more action is needed, and I hope that colleagues across this chamber will agree to add their voice to calls for the UK government to increase carers' allowance which is the lowest of all earning replacement benefits. Surely the opposition must have better aspirations for the UK social security system, and this really is a test of we are better together. The supplement has fixed a wrong inflicted on carers for years, and for 45 years successive, UK governments have refused to align the amount paid with other earning replacement benefits. Now, because our parliament is listening, carers in Scotland have had 13% increase and in addition, will be £690 better off than carers south of the border. The Labour Liberal Tory party have had all these years in Westminster to sort this and refuse to do so. In fact, their current Westminster leaders, from what I can see, have never called in Parliament for the carers' allowance to be aligned with the rate of job seekers' allowance. Once again, we're left to mitigate their shameful policies. I'm just nearly finished. If the Westminster parties finally do the right thing, we will ring fest this money to further enhance support for carers in Scotland. We must, as quickly as possible, once we agree this bill, to work closely with carers to devise the new system of carers assistance, one that leaves behind the inadequacy and inequality ingrained in the Westminster approach, and one that responds to the real world demands in carers in Scotland. Thank you. Thank you, Ms McNair. I now call on Mark Griffin, who will be followed by the final speaker in the open debate, Maggie Chapman. Again, four minutes, Mr Griffin. 
Thank you, President Officer. As one of the co-conveners of the cross-party group on carers and a former member of the Social Security Committee in the previous session, I am grateful to be speaking in this debate because carers deserve this additional payment. Being an unpaid carer is a 24-hour job done out of love, not for the allowance. But unpaid carers have likely lost income in the pandemic and have had the, the huge task of supporting severely disabled people, many of whom will have been shielding these last 18 months. And though they will get a, a lot of thanks from us, uh, and rightly so, they have been waiting years for a carer's allowance that makes the best of the powers this Parliament now has. And when the, the Minister and I were on that former committee, the supplement was one of the landmark policies the, the whole committee um, agreed on. And for my part, I was proud to ensure that the supplement was protected from inflation. Pandemic, measures, uh, pandemic legislation saw us agree to unique and substantial measures, the additional supplement, £20 uplift in universal credit, and pandemic support payments to low-income families. They have all made a substantial positive impact on household budgets. They have been lifelines, but essentially what they have done is just made social security that little bit more adequate. They should have never been special measures in the first place. And looking at the responses the committee have received, you can feel the importance that this additional payment makes to carers. One saying caring can be very stressful for some carers. They are overworked and need a break. Another saying, I get roughly 34 pence an hour to look after them and I don't get a break. Sometimes all day and night I care for them because I love them. I do it so they get the best care. The, the payment will relieve stress and that December is the hardest time financially as I want to give my kids all I can, but I also need to put food on the table. Now, those responses show the impact these payments are having. So why should they be a one-off that is ending? We should consider the, the possibility that this might be the final additional supplement, and it is similar to the decision to end the universal credit uplift. Now, the government has not done so with the same public malice as the Tories in terms of that debate, but the effect on carers' income is no different. If we do not see a similar intervention next June, their income will fall. Now, I hope that the Scottish Government will offer in its next budget a permanent uplift to the supplement and then set a route map to incorporation of that payment into the weekly award. It is time the Government brought forward legislation on carers' allowance through this chamber to set out a long-term settlement for unpaid carers to look forward to or even just to give them hope. Allowing full-time students to claim or offering a, a, a taper to end the earnings cliff edge would be a, a start. Officer, the, uh, the underlying allowance is low and still delivered by the DWP, so we do need to get to a point where carers have a choice, certainty even over whether they get a better weekly payment or a lump sum. Though they get a great deal of thanks from us, they have now been waiting years for a carers allowance that makes the best of the new powers in this Parliament, and they have been waiting long enough. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Mr Griffin, I now call Maggie Chapman again. Four minutes, Ms Chapman. Thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. Just yesterday, when the Secretary of State for Work and Pensions was performing at the Tory party conference karaoke, her government implemented the largest ever cut to the social security system. Real-term support paid to unemployed people is now as low as it was in 1992. As a proportion of earnings, it's the lowest it's been since the modern social security system began in the late 1940s. The £20 cut to universal credit and working tax credit, £1,040 a year, will impact over 400,000 Scots households. Over 20,000 of those will have a recognised unpaid carer. Scottish Government analysis suggests that this will put an additional 60,000 people into poverty, including 20,000 children. And this is on top of the benefit cap, the rape clause, the two-child limit, the benefit freeze and PIP. These constant attacks on the incomes of our poorest citizens form the backdrop to the bill we debate today. The additional support for carers provided in this bill seems modest by comparison, and indeed it is. 
an extra £231 increase to carers' allowance and a power for the Scottish Government to introduce further such increases are both very welcome, and that is why we will support the Bill at decision time today. But we must recognise that it is only one very small part of the fundamental change we need in how unpaid care is recognised, valued and supported. Let's be very clear about just how valuable unpaid care is. Recently, the University of Strathclyde published a report on the value of unpaid care provided for people with learning disabilities. The care done by unpaid carers would cost £35,000 if paid at the rate of the living wage. And if those being cared for had instead to be transferred to supported accommodation, the cost would be £114,000. A carer interviewed as part of this research said, and I quote, Unpaid carers are the mortar in the wall. We are there. We are essential. But we are hidden. No, I'm, I've got a lot to get through, I'm afraid. For decades, carers' allowance, allowance itself has been hidden away, a backwater of the social security system neglected by successive UK governments. And unfair rules have been in place for far too long. There's no recognition of care done for more than one person. Nothing offered to those who care part-time. Nothing for those who claim other income, relate, income replacement payments, and so on. Proposals in 2008 to provide an extra payment were, were welcomed by the Labour government, but were never implemented. This must change. We must have a social security system that reflects the incredible work that unpaid carers do. The forthcoming introduction of carers' assistance and the consultation on the future of support for unpaid carers, then, are crucial opportunities to build a fairer social security system for carers, and we cannot miss that opportunity. But there is no escaping the fact that with the current powers this Parliament have, has, we are restricted to tinkering on the edges of a broken system. Scotland clearly needs greater powers over borrowing and social security. Before I close, I want to briefly raise the issue of take-up. About 80,000 people receive carers' allowance and the supplement, and so will receive this additional payment. But we know there are one million people who do some level of unpaid care. DWP work to estimate take-up of disability and carer benefits was started long ago, but never finished. It doesn't have to be this way. The Scottish Government's shared policy programme with the Greens has earmarked £10 million for income maximisation services, including for households with disabled people. We must see urgent action on this, and I'd welcome an update from the Minister on this issue. To close, Deputy Presiding Office, Officer, Greens will vote for the Bill at Stage 3 today. But in doing so, we are clear that this is but one small step towards a system that offers true dignity and respect to Scotland's unpaid carers. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Ms Chapman. We now move to closing speeches. As members will be aware, those who have participated in the debate should be in the chamber for closing speeches. I would note that Mr Gray is not in the chamber, um, and I would expect an explanation for that. Um, I now call on Paul Kane for four minutes, Mr Rookie. Uh, thank you, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer. Uh, and I would like to begin by restating what everyone in the Chamber has said already. Thank you uh, to all those who have contributed to the Bill's uh, progress uh, and to all organisations indeed who gave evidence uh, and briefing uh, contributing to the passage of the Bill. And thank you also uh, to carers who do so much and too often receive too little support and not enough recognition. We have heard from colleagues across the Chamber just how challenging the past 18 months have been for carers. Indeed, the most challenging times that unpaid carers have ever faced. Services continue to be squeezed. Uh, still not enough respite care is available. Uh, I, and colleagues, I think, have alluded to that really powerfully today. Indeed, Mark Griffin and Willie Rennie speaking uh, about the experiences of, of people uh, who are caring for loved ones. And in the last few weeks, we've seen councils across the Lothians and in Glasgow, for example, cutting back on care at home provision and asking unpaid carers yet again to do more. <coughs> and that's before we even get to the worst of winter. I said at stage one that it's important that we hear the voices of carers in this legislation and respond to what they ask of us. It is the least we can do, and we uh, on these benches have reiterated that today through our amendments. Uh, and although there has been a very constrained timetable uh, for the Bill, Scottish Labour have sought to hear what carers have told us and act upon it. 
Um, the ability to increase the supplement, albeit for a limited number of months, is of course welcome. Uh, and as colleagues have said, we have supported the bill and, and will support the bill today because we believe that putting extra money into the pockets of carers in time for Christmas is a vital step in supporting them at a very demanding time of year and in the midst of a pandemic, which is still very much uh, impacting people's lives. But it only goes so far, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, and we must do more. And that is what the amendments of my colleague Pam Duncan Glancy and indeed Jeremy Balfour's amendments, I think, sought to do. Because this bill provides that one off uh, increase in carers' allowance, and it does give the power to increase future payments of the supplement. But of course, as we've heard uh, already, that is not guaranteed. Um, this bill should not be a missed opportunity to ensure that there is a guaranteed bridge of uplift for carers to have more financial security until the advent of carers' assistance, but I fear that it will be. The Government had the opportunity to change the calculation to use universal credit and to fix that to the rate prior to the Tories' uh, shameful cut, and it would have meant that eligible carers would have been entitled to a higher supplement. Uh, £480 more than the current supplement <laughs> level, but the Government have uh, refused to take that amendment on board. And I do ask, what does that say uh, to carers in Scotland? And I was indeed disappointed not to hear Maggie Chapman speak in her contribution uh, about that amendment, which she had pursued um, in committee. The Government could have also today ensured that the increased supplement is paid uh, every six months until carers' assistance is ruled out. Currently, the bill only guarantees one payment of the increased supplement in December 2021, again, as we have heard. Uh, and indeed, Mark Griffin made that point about what we would hope to see in terms of the long-term strategy and solution um, towards a meaningful uplift for carers in terms of carers' allowance. At stage one, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, the Minister suggested that the Government intend to introduce Scottish carers' assistance for new applications uh, long before 2025. Those were his words. So it would be helpful uh, if, in concluding, he would clarify what is meant by that. Uh, when will carers have extra money in their pockets before 2025? And indeed, how long uh, before 2025 will that be? Uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, the, the Chair of the Committee, who, who is in his place now, um, said in, in his contribution, and indeed I think in remarks to the Daily Record, um, that additional payments um, from the supplement uh, will ensure that we provide greater recognition to those who help to look after a loved one. I think we have seen today that there is absolutely a consensus around that in this chamber. But we do have to ask ourselves, does that rec recognition cease at the end of December? Scottish Labour will support this bill to make some more support available for stretched carers, but it is a sticking plaster to cover a gaping wound, and carers and carer organisations have been clear it is not sufficient to lift carers out of poverty. We can do more, we must do more. The Scottish Government must hear the voices of carers who for too long have felt like an afterthought. Thank you. Thank you, Mr O'Kane. I now call on Alexander Stewart for around five minutes, Mr Stewart. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I am delighted to close the Stage 3 debate on behalf of the Scottish Conservatives. Throughout each stage of this Bill, we have heard thoughtful contributions from members of all parties regarding the importance of unpaid carers. It has been said previously, but it is worth repeating, that unpaid carers are the backbone of our social care system. And it is quite clear that this has been shared right across the Chamber this afternoon. While the Bill's progress has been swift, uh, Presiding Officer, it has also provided the opportunity to debate and scrutinise how we can best support unpaid carers. And we are given the opportunity that during the pandemic, we know that an additional 400,000 carers across Scotland uh, ha had to be involved. For example, one challenging topic that we have discussed uh, this afternoon is the area uh, where it should be supporting carers who have more uh, than one person to look after, someone, for example, who has two elderly patients and parents. This bill had the potential to help address this issue, presiding officer. We also spoke about members uh, who have spoken about the role of young carers and how we can best support them. And the amendments brought forward by my colleague Jeremy Balfour today would have provided a key opportunity for ministers to review these issues. But unfortunately, the government uh, were not willing to seize that opportunity. It's also disappointing that the amendment brought to stage two from these benches, which would have provided greater financial certainty for unpaid carers by making the double supplement, was, not, uh, was also rejected. And representatives from groups from organisations like Family Fund and the National Care Organisation have made it clear that that additional layer of financial certainty would 
would have helped uh, over the winter months uh, from that. And examples of Lanarkshire carers who have spoken about how a permanent doubling of the supplement would give unpaid carers a fixed idea of their income over a longer period of time would have also given the opportunity to go ahead. But whilst the bill has, as it stands, uh, it will indeed ensure that ministers have the discretionary powers to double future payments on an ad hoc basis. But we believe it shouldn't be on an ad hoc basis and it shouldn't be left to the ministerial whims. There are just two issues that have been brought part within this debate, and these are many opportunities that we've seen. And the fact that the government have failed to capitalise on some of the potential that could have been, has been described this afternoon by others, presiding officer, as a missed opportunity. And, and I want to go on to some of the comments we've heard this afternoon. The Minister himself talked about opportunities, but what we have seen, as I've said, is missed opportunities to provide greater financial certainty to unpaid carriers. Uh, my colleague, uh, Miles Briggs spoke about how there had been constructive work across this chamber and across parties and that has been recognised but we also need to say how disappointed we were at the Greens uh, at progressing and how they seem to have lost their voice today uh, and Miles also spoke about uh, the possibility for bereavement and mental health issues they have not been capitalised on either Pam Duncan Glancy uh, spoke about carers giving and going above and beyond and a million unpaid carers within Scotland uh, and pushing the pandemic. The pandemic has, uh, without uh, uh, anyone's uh, notice, has helped uh, to ensure that many unpaid carers uh, are, are put under huge pressure, and she spoke about missed opportunities. Will there any commented on our commitment to recognising their commitment, and I think that's vitally important, and how the subject for future budget negotiations uh, were talked about, but there's still a gap exists, and that gap will continue to exist, as he talked about. And I also pay tribute to Jeremy Balfour uh, for his powerful uh, 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 amendments that he put forward and the passion he has within this topic. Nobody in this chamber can deny that. And he talked about commitment of carers going beyond and going far and doing what they can. But once again, presiding officer, he spoke about the missed opportunities that we see here today. So in conclusion, nothing I have said today would imply that this bill is not very much welcomed by these benches because it is welcomed by these benches. But it provides their financial assistance to over 90,000 carers this winter, which of course is something that we wholeheartedly support. But it is nevertheless disappointing, presiding officer, that in this respect of the bill, it has failed to come up to its full potential. Going forward, the debate around the vital contribution which unpaid carers make to our society and how the social security system should impact is very important, and that will continue to be something that is discussed for the weeks, months and years ahead. But even if this bill has failed to address many of the aspects that we had hoped, the potential is still here, and I have no doubt that supporting this bill and the Conservatives will support this bill will provide very much welcome support to individuals this December. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I support the bill. Thank you very much indeed, Mr Stewart. And I call on Ben McPherson to wind up the debate, Minister, for around six minutes, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And it's uh, clear from the debate this afternoon that there is cross-party support for the intent behind this bill to increase uh, December's CARES Allowance Supplement payment. Um, and I uh, really uh, appreciate that from all parties. Uh, and we have also uh, demonstrated together our recognition and appreciation from the, for the remarkable role uh, that carers across Scotland uh, play uh, and have played, uh, particularly during the pandemic uh, and the impact that this has had on them. Um, as I made clear in my opening contribution, the government is building a social security system based on the principles of dignity, fairness and respect. And this bill uh, intends to offer further support to carers across Scotland who have been under additional pressure because of the pandemic. This is more than warm words. This is standing up and making a financial investment in a, as an, at an important time and undertaking the legislative process in order to do that. So this government is committed to doing things and that's what this bill is all about. Um, a number of points were raised during this debate, President <coughs> Officer, which I, I may not have um, capacity to address uh, all of them. But uh, some, uh, a series of questions have been raised around uh, Scottish Care's assistance and where we move forward from here. And it's clear that there is a determination across the Chamber to do more. We want to do more. We all want to do more. And that is why we continue as a government to make good progress towards the launch of Scottish Care's assistance, including the additional payment for those with multiple caring roles. Due to the impacts of the pandemic, both the Scottish Government and the DWP 
who are in integral to our work at, 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 in this phase uh, have had to work on a new timetable for delivering Scottish carers' assistance uh, and transferring Scottish clients in receipt of uh, carers' allowance. However, as I said, we are making good progress. We have started feasibility work uh, with the DWP uh, and will carry on into the new year. This will give us a much more detailed understanding of what needs to be done and how long it will take. Our aim is to progress building systems required for Scottish Care's assistance uh, and the additional uh, payment in the new year. Um, and we uh, anticipate this will take a minimum of 18 months, given the complex interactions between carer benefits and the reserved benefits system. I will, yes. Pam Duncan Glancy. Thank you, President Officer. Thank you for taking the intervention, Minister. Given that it's going to possibly take 18 months to get to that point and carers are living in extreme poverty now, I ask you again to give a commitment that you will double the, the supplement again in June when the pandemic will be far from over and again in December and again until you can address the adequacy of the payment. Minister. As I have said on several occasions to that important question, we will absolutely be giving consideration to these matters in the budget process, and I urge all parties to give it that seriousness and that attention. Prime Officer, um, we will begin delivering Scottish Care's assistance. Uh, when we begin delivering Scottish Care's assistance, rather, our immediate priority is uh, to protect those, uh, uh, to protect the support that carers already in receipt of carers' allowance rely on and to ensure the transfer of their benefits uh, is safe and secure, as well as opening a new application process. Um, this means that we won't be able to make uh, any additional changes to eligibility immediately. Uh, however, that there is one exception to that, which I have mentioned already, which is introducing the in additional payment for those with multiple uh, caring roles, um, as was raised by, by Miles Briggs. Moreover, um, all of this considered doesn't mean that we won't be making improvements from the launch of our new support. We want to deliver a better service and we'll be working with carers to design applications and communications so they will work for the people who use them. We will also use the new benefit to help carers find out more about other support they may be entitled to. Uh, and when looking to prioritise the further changes that we can be made once safe and secure is complete, uh, we need to carefully consider the balance between extending eligibility for Scottish Care's assistance and increasing the amount of Scottish Care's assistance. So working with carers and organisations uh, that support them, we have identified 15 options for changes we could make when we introduce our replacement uh, to Care's Allowance, the Scottish Care's assistance. Uh, and this includes uh, the option to make a recognition payment to carers with underlying entitlement, a point that Willie Rennie raised, um, action to expand uh, payments for carers uh, after bereavement, as Mr Briggs highlighted, uh, and also um, considerations around uh, carers in full-time education, as Mark Griffin rightly highlighted. So we are working with stakeholders uh, and undertaking further analysis of these to identify which options should be progress progressed in advance of uh, consulting uh, on final proposals for Scottish Care's assistance this winter. Moving um, back to the here and now, presiding officer, uh, uh, in conclusion, we have secured the financial resource for doubling December's Care's Allowance Supplement, which is why we prioritise bringing forward this bill, uh, which was one of our 100-day commitments in our, our, and, uh, and the first programmed bill uh, to be passed by this Parliament if Parliament chooses to do that. Uh, and this is about focusing on getting assistance to carers this December. As was noted at stage two, um, of course, uh, there is more we could do and there's more that the UK government could do in terms of carers allowance generally. But um, I think let's come together today to acknowledge the fact that this bill will ensure a payment of £462.80 will be made in December to all carers allowance uh, supplement recipients instead of the planned £231.40 uh, and there will be an additional payment this year to unpaid carers in Scotland uh, in receipt of Scottish carers allowance of £694.20 more than those south of the border. So there's been a bit of negativity in the debate today but um, it's a positive thing that we have before us. Um, there's more we can do, there's more we will do together to support unpaid carers in the months and years ahead but together we can make a difference today so let's make that difference and I urge Parliament to pass the Cares Allowance Supplement Scotland Bill. Thank you, President Officer. Thank you. That concludes the debate on Carers Allowance Supplement Scotland Bill. It's now time to move on to the next item of business, which is consideration 
of two Scottish Government motions, and I ask John Swinney, on behalf of the Scottish Government, to speak to and move motions 1597 and 1598 on withdrawal of SSIs. Thank you, President Officer. It is vital for local democracy and for local service delivery that councils are as representative as possible of the communities they serve. Following the Islands Act 2018, Boundaries Scotland have reviewed the council war boundaries of all local authorities with inhabited islands and submitted their recommendations to ministers. The Scottish Elections Reform Act 2020 removed ministerial discretion to reject or modify these proposals. The decision of whether or not to implement Boundaries Scotland's recommendations now rests exclusively with Parliament. The Local Government Housing and Planning Committee have considered each of the reviews and I agree with the Committee's assessment that Boundaries Scotland have discharged their duties in a professional and competent manner. The Committee disagreed with some of the recommendations for Highland Council and Argyll and Butte Council. As a consequence of this decision by the Committee, I consider the appropriate action for Ministers to take is that we will ask Boundaries Scotland to take a further look at these proposals. Parliament agreed yesterday to the reviews for Collier and Neelan Shear, Orkney Islands, Shetland Islands and North Ayrshire. These changes will therefore be in place for the local government elections in May 2022. It is regrettable that there was not sufficient agreement to allow the wards for Highland and Argyll and Butte to be updated in time for the 2022 elections. The committee has called for the councils involved to engage with Boundaries Scotland on new reviews of those areas. I echo that call. However, I would also stress to members that an independent boundary commission is widely considered to be a key feature of democratic societies. It will not always be possible for Boundaries Scotland to resolve all concerns raised, but I believe Parliament should have confidence in how Boundaries Scotland carry out their functions. We will monitor progress with the new reviews closely and include this experience in our post-legislative assessment of the new laws surrounding boundary reviews. I therefore propose that the instruments in relation to Highland and Argyll and Butte councils be withdrawn and move the motions that stand in my name. Thank you. The question on these motions will be put at decision time. The next item of business is consideration of Parliamentary Bureau Motion 1601 on temporary standing orders. And I ask George Adam, on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau, to speak to and move the motion. Thank you, President Officer. Motion S61601 um, amends temporary standing order rule 3 to extend the period for which access to the public gallery is suspended until 24 December 2021. In light of the ongoing public health circumstances, members will wish to note that should circumstances allow it, it would be possible for the presiding officer to reinstate access to the gallery before that date. I move the motion in my name, presiding officer. Thank you. The question on this motion will be put at decision time. There are four questions to be put as a result of today's business. On the point of order. I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful, Presiding Officer. I seek your guidance understanding Order Rule 13.2 on how I can request a minister to exercise their ability to provide a statement as to why, since the start of this academic year, in the daily coronavirus COVID-19 data that is issued at two o'clock each day, a subparagraph contains the phrase, data on students at universities and colleges testing positive for COVID-19 is no longer being updated, as most teaching has stopped for the summer. Universities went back as far as the 4th of September of the start of their term, so how can a minister from this government be urged to attend to give a statement as to why the academic dates are not known within government, but more importantly, why the data has not been provided? I thank the member for his point of order. Um, Mr Whitfield will be aware that consideration of the business programme is a matter for the Business Bureau, the Parliamentary Business Bureau, in the first instance. Uh, Mr Whitfield may therefore wish to ask his business manager to raise, this meeting, to raise this matter at the next meeting of the Parliamentary Bureau. Thank you. Um, there are four questions to be put as a result of today's business. The first is that Motion 1554 in the name of Ben McPherson on Carers Allowance Supplement Scotland Bill at Stage 3 be agreed. Are we all agreed? Parliament is agreed, but as this was a stage three 
uh, debate, there will be a vote and there will be a very short suspension to allow members to access the digital voting system.